Now, I want to kind of mount this in place. I, I like to make it so that I can take off the back if I want to. So I'm just going to glue it onto the, the side with the spacers on it. And what you do is you just kind of tag it with some super glue. You want to be careful of your mechanism so that you don't glue your mechanism shut. You want to center, you want to look at your center, make sure that it's centered this way and this way. And then once it's kind of tagged, then you can go in and reinforce it. If you blow on a little bit, it accelerates it even more. Now, you don't have to get too crazy with it be, uh, on this one anyways because there you got your ready to go there. Check everything, make sure everything's smooth. And we are ready to button up the handle. Okay. This is all the internal structure. Once this internal structure is done, then we can move on to... Uh, more of the fun stuff. Got our handle. Put our handle on. And there's your block version with your lights. That locks back. These here are just pieces of, uh, I was digging around and I was looking for something with a slot in it uh, to accept the, uh, uh, the, the butt stock, the sliding butt stock. Big part of model making is utilizing other materials to do what you want them to do. Uh, also, keeping an eye out for cool shapes, uh, looking for, uh, digging in the dumpster is a great place to go, we call it dumpster diving. And if you can find a, a shape that works for you or something that's fun or cool, uh, you can use it uh, on your piece. Old machine parts or uh, old parts out of a washer you can use sometimes. Uh, or you can fabricate stuff from scratch uh, if you need something specific. So this is just angle aluminum that I had hanging around and I just cut it to, to kind of cover over this slide to kind of hold the slide in place so it doesn't pop up. Now. We can move on to the more fun stuff. I already started this side, kind of grungy because it's grungy in the shop, uh, but uh, I started sculpting this out. Uh, you use a Dremel tool, and uh, I'll show you how that works. You can use a, a Dremel tool um, with a barrel on it. It's got a little sander on it here, and it's great for sculpting this stuff. It's, it's got no grain to it, so you can actually uh, do some really cool shapes and stuff like that with it. Um, so let's get into it. So this side's kind of almost ready. This is kind of smooth. So we're going to work on the back side. I kind of started roughing it out here. So you just want to kind of So I want to kind of take this in a little bit. It comes in. I'm going to kind of grind this down. And you just want to kind of sculpt your shape out. This, is, this kicks in a little bit here. Right in here. So I want to take this down a little bit. Kind of matching to this side. So you want to kind of feel it out too, you know, feel feel what it feels like. It feels natural in your hand, you know, because your finger comes across here as ergonomics. So 
kind of a thing. So your thumb goes in through here, like that. Then, once you got that, you can hit it with a sanding block to kind of smooth it out. Or if you need something more heavy duty, you can use, uh, you can make these yourself out of a piece of wood or um, usually what I like to do is it's just a nice sanding block. But uh, I put like 100 grit on one side and like 220 on the other side. You just take some spray adhesive, spray it on both sides, stick it down, cut it out with a razor blade. And it kind of gives you uh, like a chisel that you can kind of work with. But since this is an organic shape and I want it to be smooth, I need, uh, I need some 100 grit, little piece of uh, 100 grit sandpaper and just kind of smooth out that area, take all the, take the uh, grinder marks out of it, the Dremel marks. Now you don't want to get too thin because then you're going to start cutting into your your uh, uh, your spacer here. So you want to kind of feather that into it. As you can see, it's a nice transition. Now, later on, I'm going to put some grips on here, some grips on this area. So I'm not going to get too crazy with this zone here, right? Just the areas that are going to be seen. So you want that to kind of match to that. You can dial it in a little bit better, take your, take more time with it. But uh, for this, we'll just go with we'll just go with this. So I got lots of other cool little components to put on this thing. Now, once we got this this, this base shape here, um, I was talking about the slider. This I made up earlier. Uh, this uh, is a uh, is like a butt stock, a sliding butt stock for it that we, uh, I laid this in here earlier and you just drill this out with ho uh, holes. Um, I found some angle iron that, that fit the right size and then that accepts it right in the groove there. So you got, so that's part of the design. So you got a stock that slides out, you know, like this. So that will all be dressed out. What, what you're trying to do is block it. You want to block it first. You want to build out the large details and save the small details for later. Uh, you always start out with your engineering and, uh, and you work from the inside out. For your battery pack here, uh, if you're going to put a battery in here eventually for either a MIDI player or uh, even speakers or, or, or whatever else you want to put in there, um, I just dressed out a little piece of uh, detail that kind of fits that and it just drops in there like this. So uh, it, it's almost like a little access panel there, okay, which is easy enough to do. You just cut it out on the bandsaw and sand it um, to fit. And this is just a little nerny. Nernies and greebles, and that's what our business is all about. Those are the little details that uh, will eventually uh, really sell your piece. It still needs the clip, all right? So you want to put a clip in here, but I want it to be practical. So what I started to do was uh, block out um, two sides, the same as before, the, uh, uh, the, the sandwich effect, all right? And then in between the sandwich, the meat in the sandwich, what I used is, uh, is a thin piece of uh, like uh, uh, quarter, half inch uh, MDF to kind of create a, a clip slider, all right? that goes in there that, that accepts, uh, accepts the, uh, the slides real nice in there. And then I took styrene sheeting and skinned the outside of it. At this phase, you don't want to get too detailed with anything. You just want to kind of block stuff out. That's why it's kind of rough looking. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of rough along the edges and so on and so forth there. And what we want to do is move this aside is I, I want to kind of clean these up. So I can take my file, clean up the edges, 
clean up these lines on the inside uh, by file works real nice for this because you can you can do both at the same time or you can just be much more clean with it when you cut it out um, but you still you're, you're still going to need to clean it up so I'm going to clean this up real quick I just like the open shape um, so you can actually see it's it's another practical trick so you can see the thing going in and out it's kind of interesting um, it gives a little bit more style you know and uh, then once you have this I just put a piece of acrylic uh, quarter inch acrylic on the bottom because it's a little tougher and I don't want it to uh, uh, to get too beat up and then I just took the Dremel like this and just carved out some little grooves to uh, accept like finger slots, you know, so you can grab it with your fingers like this. Anyways, that goes in here like this. Oh, backwards. Uh, this goes in here like this. I don't know if you can see this. There is a, there's a thin piece of styrene on, on this side, and then there's a styrene skin with a piece of quarter inch MDF on this side. All right. Um, so this will slide in like this, and then we can take the whole rig and I, I left a little space here for, uh, to accept the new clip. So basically that will slide and align into this. All right. So that's, you can see it's starting to take shape now. Okay. Now when you glue this, when you glue this in, you don't want this because you don't want to glue that in. So what we'll do is we'll place this, line it up in here. And I'll be aware too that you've got slidey parts all over this. If you put too much glue, you could ruin all your work. You could glue this thing together. This could get glued in, which would be bad. Um, so what we'll do is we'll remove all the potential stuff here. And be aware uh, that glue does travel and glue will want to travel wherever it wants to go. Uh, there's two different types of glue. You've got the green. It comes in green, orange, and red. This is uh, a little thicker, um, so it kind of stays in place. This is evil. I glue my fingers together all the time with this shit. Um, it's, uh, it, it's very flowy. It's almost, it's almost like water, and it's, uh, it will uh, f go everywhere. Uh, cap, it's called capillary action. Um, which if you put two panes of glass together, you could put one drop and it would spread out over the whole pane and glue it together. So what I'm going to do for this is uh, we're going to attach it at the top here and at the bottom here. So what we want to do is put a little glue on this guy, a little glue on this guy, and some on the bottom here. making sure you don't get any glue on the inside. Then we want to align it, key it into position, take your kicker, Sometimes breaking it actually helps because it allows the glue to uh, reset itself. And so we're just going to put a little bit of the thin stuff just because I want to uh, you just run along the edge there and zap it. And since this is going to take a lot of stress, I want to reinforce this area. I'm not too worried about all the glue and stuff like that right now, uh, other than not getting it in, obviously getting it in the wrong places. But you just want to reinforce this because it's going to take a, a lot of beating. 
So if you build something up, if your glue builds up at this stage, it's really not that important. Then you can hit it with your little sander. You know, you, if, and then it'll take your clip. So you got a nice little deal here. Okay. I whipped up this little stand last night for working on stuff. So I put a hole in the bottom of it so I can put it on the stand and you can get an idea about what's going on here. So okay. These uh, little bits here are just little nurnies and greebles, little details that you can uh, you can just fabricate out of a plastic or um, you can use MDF, except MDF when it's thin it gets kind of weak. So what I like to do is uh, whenever I'm, if I want to harden my MDF so it's a little tougher, I just take the thin stuff and it just absorbs right into the material. Uh, it, it actually, uh, it, uh, it's almost like painting it with, uh, with glue and it hardens it. Makes it a little tougher. Now if you uh, if you zap it, it, it may crystallize because it, uh, it super accelerates the glue. So we still got the wires hanging out on this side. What do we do with those? All right, those we just, we're going to, all this is going to be covered. I had, some, I had some perforated steel hanging around, a perforated aluminum um, that I, I took a pattern out of paper and kind of wrapped it around this. Uh, to get an idea about how big the uh, this area is for this mock suppressor, so to speak, and uh, and then I cut this out. This is a uh, uh, little perforated aluminum, same stuff as the table's made out of, and I just rolled it into a ring, and that will go like so. But for effect, I wanted it to look have colors to it. So you get a piece of this gel. Um, it's a film gel. And what I do is slide this into this. And then I kind of advanced it a little bit. And then that would slide over the acrylic tube. And... There you go. So when you pull a trigger, you got some colors. It's kind of it makes it a little bit more interesting.